Hey, I'm George. And I'm Zach. With League Leaders Podcast, a clutch gaming-centric podcast based here in Houston. And we're with the Critical Thinking Podcast, where we're thinking shit through one podcast at a time. (laughs) Wow, they got it in one take. And they did it together, man. I was like, did you see the flow? Yes. That was amazing. <laughs> Seriously, you talk about our chemistry. You got obviously father and son. Due to an excess of tomfoolery and general fucking nonsense, we will suspend the usual intro jokes and proceed with the program. Thank you for joining us. No, like seriously, for real, we are actually starting now for Pete's sake. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Critical Thinking Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle, along with my co-host, Rick the Rizzo, and our other co-host, Sean, and the other Mexican in the room, Miguel G. And this is a critical look at all things gaming, movies, collectibles, and so much more. What the hell is going on here? Let me tell you something. There's only two n****s in this house, and these n****s are Rick the Dick and Mike the Long Dong. Obviously, Kyle can't wake the fuck up. Sean can't get off an AA, and where the hell's Josh at? I don't know. Josh in the gay house. (laughs) Gay? (laughs) Josh is working late. That's all he does. Is that a code for sex? I don't know. I doubt it. He is married. (laughs) He is married, but... He just I, worked late. His wife a little freaky. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Uh, How do you know? I don't know. I'm just saying. She seems to have a blast when she's in here with us. <laughs> I think she's looking at us like, ooh, there's five of them in here. Ooh, my. <laughs> I'm just playing, Josh. We love you and your wife. We miss all you guys. I know you guys can't be here. Y'all have a lot of stuff to do, so we appreciate it. We know you can't be here, so you just let me and Rick be the men. We're men. Mm-hmm. We're men. Not in tights. No, no, no way. You don't want to no, see that. Oh, hell no. You no. don't want to see that. Ooh. Though. Oh, yeah, yeah, but uh, you wearing tights? Hell no. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You have to stick a box of quarters down your pants. God damn. <laughs> and that's just to stuff. stretch the tights that I'm seeing down there. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, how was your weekend? Well, my weekend was uh, kind of busy. My parents went out of town again to take my niece, my niece, and my little nephew back to Oklahoma. Oh, you didn't go? No, I didn't go. Oh, I stayed wow. here because I had to watch over. Uh, I had to watch over grandma. You know, grandmother. She's at the age. You know, you got to watch over her. Just give her a little bit of uh, that uh, Geritol, bro. She get up and run around. You, you, you try that. Give her some juice. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt if she drink the juice. Give her some juice, man. But then it, her diabetes, her diabetes would kind of kick in on that one. Hey, man, did you read that can? Juice, juice has been proven technically to, to prevent diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> but, juice, uh, if you're listening, we want your sponsors. Other than that, I mean, it was it was a pretty okay weekend. I had no drama this time with grandmother like before when she fell. Nice job. I'm kind of laughing about it. It's, it's, it's not like you know, you intended her to fall, but she fell. But you pushed her. I wasn't there. Uh, oh, that, there you go. Absentee <laughs> babysitter. Nice job. I'm calling the law. No, I have to drive and take everybody to work. You know, then I come back and I'm all like, uh. Ain't there a bus in down? <laughs> you know, buzzing Rosenberg. She said, walk. Ain't about 165 degrees outside. You ain't going to melt. <laughs> It's like it's 165 degrees. Some people will melt. You're going to get a stroke. <laughs> By the time you get, and that's just in the morning. <laughs> Holy crap. And we're talking that old dark 30 in the morning, 4 o'clock. <laughs> By noon, it's 205. Like, but other than that, it was a really restful weekend. I was able to just about it. Just take care of grandmother, catch up on the stuff, play a couple of games, whatever. You laid in bed with Lola? I got you. Nah, Lola lay on the on the floor. Damn, Lola don't even want to be next to you. She, she's hot. She's all like, I'm sitting on the floor. Well, turn on the damn air conditioner. Air conditioner's on. And it's still hot. She's just sitting there. It's hot. Put a block of ice on the floor. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt she'd lie on that. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you get burns that way. You got to be careful. Oh, yeah. Dry ice be burning you. You don't put dry ice, goddamn <laughs> fool. Well, you can't put regular ice. It's going to melt and cause a bottle. That's why you just put it in the cooler. Put it in the cooler. <laughs> so you go to the dog in the cooler. Hey, you know, if I had... If I had uh, what do you call them? Huskies? Uh-huh. If I had the, if you I, need a cooler. You, they, they'll sit in the ice. Yeah, I mean. They, you can cover them with ice, and they'll be like, yeah, I'm good. Why the hell would you have a husky in Texas? Some people do. They're actually real beautiful dogs. Hot. They're beautiful dogs, though. You got to shave the dog so you can survive. They got a double coat. That's what's really messed up. You can shave it, but they still got another one underneath. So you know what? You got to skin him. <laughs> God dang. <laughs> you know, because, you know, our sponsor, Joseph Cano, he has a husky. Yeah, but that husky inside. 
Yeah. And he's still dying. <laughs> still hot shit in that thing. Oh, dude, when the air conditioner went out, the Husky went to the apartment. Yeah. <laughs> he got the hell out of there. So how was your weekend? My weekend was a lot of fun, actually. I uh, got to see my daughter and my grandson again. Went to her house. I had a good time up there. Helped her a little bit again. Then she took me and my boys to go see Jurassic Park. So Jurassic awful. Park World. Oh, yeah, Jurassic Park. Yeah, that new porn that came out. Yeah, great movie. <laughs> yeah, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, or Fallen World, Upside Down Kingdom. I don't know. Mm. We saw the latest one. And then uh, Sunday, uh, she came over to my house and brought my grandson. I got to play around again. We had all kinds of fun, and he bit my nose. <laughs> Is that why you got that little mark on your yeah, nose? Yeah, yeah. Well, he just likes to play. I mean, he likes to climb Grandpa. Grandpa is like the mountain, I guess, and uses Grandpa to climb on the top of things. Like, oh, Grandpa's sitting on the ground. Let me use him to get on top of the sofa. Yeah, no, no. Note to self, Miguel referred himself as a mountain. No, and that's not his dick. No, what? <laughs> no, man. I, I'm the only one. I mean, I'm not the only one, but I'll get on the floor and play with my grandson and, and, and throw the ball with him and, and roll around and just have fun. What you got to throw a ball and a little kid for? Because he threw it first, damn it. <laughs> I'm throwing a, a, a puffy ball. He's throwing blocks. <laughs> he hit me with a with the freaking uh, uh, his juice bottle. He told me not the mama. Bam. <laughs> no, no, he, he's so much fun. I I. I I actually, I'm so glad that I'm actually that young, that I'm at the age right now that I actually have a grandson that I can be able to go on the floor and play because uh, my dad has a grandson too, my nephew, and my dad can't really do much. I mean, he sits there and jokes and laughs with him, but he can't get on the floor. So I'm actually blessed to be this young and have a grandson that I can actually spend time and my kids and whatnot. So yeah, so it was a great mm. time. So that That's was cool. my weekend. Mm. Nice. Just had a good old time. All right, Sean, how was your weekend? Oh, I drank juice. I hit on my cousin. She said no. <laughs> I drank some more juice. I gave her some. Then she said yes. <laughs> what the hell, Sean? <laughs> Sorry, dear. That was not Sean. That was my breast impersonation of Sean, but I should have talked like this. Well, I opened up the encyclopedia and I read it from A to Z. <laughs> it's like, how was yours, Josh? Josh, the mad dog, I worked. I worked hard this week. I fixed three computers, two dogs, and one cat. I think he's uh, isn't he off on the weekends. No, sometimes he works. Oh, okay. That's, uh, that's a code for sex. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kyle, how are you doing? Well, Kyle been working on his truck. Is that what you say? He calls his wife his truck. He gave her an mm. overhaul. <laughs> that's a code for sex. That's a code for sex. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see the truck out there. He's trying to get ready for a show, right? No, the weekend he works on his uh, C10 that he has, and he has a C10 meat. In September, so he's trying to get that up and going. That's kind of hard, considering he gets up old dark thirty in the morning, kind of like we do. Goes and does his other job where he runs the, the place, then stays there till almost six something at night, and come home and work on that, and then still eat, and then that pass out. Yeah, and does that five days a week, and then on the weekend he continues to work on that and does other stuff on the side. God bless the man. I yeah. mean, seriously, that's a hardworking man. He works hard for his family and everything else. So when they made that song, we work hard for the money. They were talking about Kyle. Yeah, it must be. <laughs> I told him being a stripper would be easier for him. He's in shape. <laughs> yeah, he is. He, I mean, is. he, he be in Chippendales. He's not like our shape. He's not round. No, he's not round. But you know, he might get money in the string. Or as Eric, as my brother would say, pear is the best shape. Pear is the best shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not pears. We're watermelons standing up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and move mosey on into our. Mosey. Mosey. What kind of shit is that? I figured I'd use a different word. Oh, because use. we're going to have a country star on here later today? We're going to mosey on? Why don't I just sashay over to the box office numbers? We don't have a country star. Well, he's a country DJ. He's from the bull. <laughs> Your bull. Uh, that nigga, <laughs> I'll give you the bull. Anyways, <laughs> let's go to our box office numbers. Oh, yeah. Box office from June 29, July the 1st. Brought to you by... My BDSM supply. My BDSM supply is located. <laughs> now, nah, I haven't mentioned them in a long time. I feel I wanted to throw it out there. But brought to you by Uncanny Comics, located in Rosenberg, Texas. I haven't even, and Tanks Paintball, located in Richmond, Texas as well. Uh, and Tokyo Munchie. So they're bringing this to you together. All together. All together. All in one. Get it for the price of one. <laughs> Buy one, get one free right now. Coming in at number one. <gasps> the porno. Jurassic Park. <laughs> no. I'm looking for the park park. Oh, yeah. My bad. Whatever. I can't read. Number one, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And, how, how much did it make, bro? It made a lot. Uh, that, that's it, how you it, classify that? It had, a bu- it had a budget of 170, but this week it made 60, 60.9 mil. But yeah. get this. It made total for two weeks. Two weeks? 265.6 mil. Uh, can, can, can I shit on you? Go ahead. I knew you liked that. <laughs> yeah. In two weeks, worldwide, 
with everything in the North America and everywhere else, you want to know what it's got in two weeks? $932 million, $387,335. Dude. Okay, first of all, remember, Avengers broke Titanic at $2.3 something billion. This stupid movie has $932 million in two weeks. Damn. Will it surpass Avengers? What is your call on that? Or is the hype going to die down and it's going to hit a billion and that's going to be it? Well, considering Avengers dropped all the way down to 12 already. Mm-hmm. Will, and it's still out there. Do you think Jurassic World has the the dinosaur nuggets to get up there to number one overall? It's hard to say. That is hard to say. Would you want it to be? I, I haven't gone out to watch it yet. I know a lot of people. I mean, it's the sequels that we didn't really ask for, but we got them anyways, if you think about it. That is true. But when you make money and you print money, when you make these mm-hmm. movies, dinos are still in, no matter what you think. And dinos eating humans are in. No. And it went black. <laughs> Not the dino, but the screen. <laughs> anyways. Ooh, that'd be cool if there was a black dino. All right, well, let's just move on. Okay. Number two. <gasps> the Incredibles. Oh, number two. The Incredibles 2 made 46.4 with a total gross of 400 440,000,000.6 on their third week. Don't know what the budget is. Miguel, what is their worldwide numbers? I'm about to get to that if you give me one damn second. One. That's two minutes. That's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, according to the to the, to the the zone here, uh, here it says it made four hundred forty million in what? No, it's three weeks. It's three weeks. In three weeks, it made six hundred forty-eight point eight million dollars. Wow, it's not even pulling it, Jurassic World. You figured it's it's a kid movie. It's a kid movie, but you'd figure to do a lot better. But it, it, it did well because you got to remember. Okay, think about this. Jurassic Park has a lot of dinos, and it's still scary some part. But my parents took their kid. There was kids next to me in the freaking movie theater, younger than my almost as young as my grandson, and laughing at you. Why? Because I was jumping? Yeah. I don't jump when dinos come out. Oh, you have a lot of jump scares. But I heard you jump. <laughs> I did jump. Shut up. <laughs> the T-Rex got me. <laughs> but no, I, you're right. You're right. I would expect that The Incredibles be breaking that one billion mark. Yeah, and it didn't. And from what I heard, it's a really good movie. It's a really good follow-up from the first one. Now, I think if Jurassic World didn't come out right now, I think it probably would have hit it. Probably. I think some of the money from uh, the parents' money, instead of taking the kids' Incredibles, went to Jurassic World. Yeah. So, but yeah. they're both good movies, and they're both making great money. Yeah. And then, all right, coming in number three, the movie we wanted to see, we thought would be better than the first one, but we didn't go see it yet because we're scared. Yeah, I still, honestly, I still want to go check it out. It came in at number for being its first week. Came in at number three, Sicario: The Day of the Soldado, Day of the Soldier. Is that what that means? Yes. What the uh, hell, you Mexican now? <laughs> What, just because I said soldado? Well, yeah, I didn't think the way you said it, too. It's soldado. <laughs> Very nice. Anyway, it made a total of 19 mil. Thank you, Don Francisco. Uh, with a total budget of 35. This has got Josh Borland and Benicio Del Toro, or as my dad would say, Antonio Banderas from the commercial. Nice, no, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that ain't funny. <laughs> you know, Antonio Banderas and Josh Borland are both of them. Two of my favorite actors that are out there right now. Mm. Josh is really making a killing with a lot of movies that he's been... Yeah, it's the summer of Brolin, remember? That's, yes. that's the whole tag. Now, the thing about this movie, it looks really good because Brolin teams up with uh, Del Toro. And then they go up against each other. Yes, because his, uh, Brolin's people tell him to go back. We don't want to give away spoilers, but that's in the trailer. Yeah. So then they're going against each other. That's pretty cool. Now, I think Sicario 2 would have probably been better if they didn't use uh, Del Toro. Had they used... Uh, Homeboy's uh, homeboy from country from no country of men. What's his name? Uh, 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 Javier Bardem. Javier Bardem. I think that'd been cooler. But the Toro is kind of scary. So he 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 plays that smooth hitman. So basically, you'd go see this movie for the violence. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, yeah, it goes it goes well. yeah, it does well. But yeah, definitely, I'm probably going to check it out. Honestly, I think I'm going to go check this on. Even though I've seen bits and parts of the first one, but the first one is probably totally different than what this is. Yeah. This one has looks like it's going to be looks a like more they made a correction from what the first one was. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You know, they always do say sometimes the second one is better than the first one. Yeah. Empire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then coming in, number four, another one that I want to go check out is comedy. Uncle Drew. Yeah, my boys want to see that too. It looks very funny. The old guys, basketball is taking on the young guys. 
Uh, it has the comedic aspect. Didn't do too bad. Not bad, you know, for mm. for the movie what it is. Yeah, it made fifteen mil. Yeah, LeBron got more 2. going to the Lakers than they made. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, it made fifteen point two. Don't know what the budget is on it, but it you know came in at number four, which is is you know isn't too bad for an opening, I guess. But it could have been better. Again. Kind of hard to compete against Jurassic World. Yeah, and and The Incredibles. Even though The Incredibles didn't do that great, it's still a major popular, you know, title. Yeah. It's not like they're going up against Scruffy Dog or some crap like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then finally coming in at number five, uh, Ocean's 8, which I want to check out. I didn't know if I was going to check out in the movie theaters, but as well as it's doing, being that it's fourth week, it's still number five. True. But that's not, uh, you know, it's made what at eight eight million this week and then one hundred fifteen so far. But worldwide's only made two hundred ten together. Everything so far is two hundred ten, and so it's, it's not. It only has seventy seventy million dollar budget. That's true. It so. made its money, but it's not as popular as the other oceans. Yeah, and maybe it's because the female cast they have. I mean, they got. I don't think it's the female cast. It might have been the story. The story. But then again, it's still great. I don't. It's I don't, all the same shit. I don't knock it being that just because it changed the female. No, I'm not, I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying the female actresses, they could have chose somebody different than some of the actresses they chose. I mean, they could have gotten maybe... Okay, here's the thing for you. The budget was 70 mil. Now, how much of that was for the actresses that did get the big names? Now, if they'd have gone with someone lesser name, you think it would have done as bad? Probably done worse, right? Maybe mm-hmm. they should have gotten somebody with a little better pedigree than, I don't know. than Sandra Bullock. I mean, you said Bullock. You said... Uh, uh, what's her name? Mir- was it Miriam in that? Her- Miriam or no? Or no, was, uh, um... Rihanna she played there. Hela. She played Hela and Thor. Kate Blanchett, Kate Blanchett. She, she was in it. But you also know that Rihanna was in it, so yeah. she was eight ball or nine ball, whatever she was supposed to be. So, like, then you also had the, uh, what's her name that had that show on Fox? Mindy? Oh, yeah. Cohen, or no, not Mindy Cohen. Uh, uh, Sandra Bullock, Kate Blanchett, Anne Hathaway, Mindy Culling, there you go. Sarah Paulson. So, yeah, I just thought Rihanna, Helen Bottom Carter. I just thought there were some people in there that they could have gotten better. Uh, did you know that uh, Dakota Fanning had an appearance in the movie? I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. So you know, it's it's. I don't know. I think one. It might have been. It could have been better. Uh, but I just think Oceans might have been played already, and I don't think. Uh, even like you said, it might have been played, but being for four weeks, it's still number five. Well, that's not bad. Again, mm. nothing really out there to really challenge it. But mm. I put it this way: you see, Deadpool's sitting there at number seven, where I'm just jumping that down. Uh, had it not been week seven. Ocean's, if it had been the same amount of weeks Ocean was, Ocean would be sitting underneath it. Yeah. Just saying. And then any honorable mention besides Deadpool? Well, Solo's sitting there at number nine, which I'm surprised. Yeah. Of course, you mentioned uh, yeah. Avengers sitting at 12. Yeah. And The Rock's still hanging down there at number 15, Rampage. Yeah, Rampage, but the budget, man, didn't do too well. No, I don't think the numbers there. I think, yeah, the numbers versus the American market wasn't great, but I think overall it was. Uh, I think it did fairly well. Here, and give me a second, and I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, Rampage uh, had that hundred twenty million dollar budget, and according to our thing here, it made only ninety eight mil worldwide. Everything together, it made four hundred twenty four million dollars. So it did better overseas than when it did here. Yeah. So yeah, it clearly made another what freaking. Uh, almost three hundred some odd million dollars. Yeah. So, but the point is, it's The Rock, and he still has yet to. Well, take that back. Since he's become a better actor, his movies have been. He's making money no matter yeah. what, even if the budget is that high. I mean, he does have uh, what skyscraper coming out soon. Oh God, I, that's gonna be. I don't know how that's gonna come out, man. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that's gonna be. Now, another honorable mention is coming in at number ten. It's his fourth week. Everybody knows who Mister Rogers is. That oh yeah, a, yeah, that was a documentary movie that came out, and I think it was only selective theaters because I didn't see it at any of ours over here. Uh, I showed you, I showed Miguel the trailer when we we're kind of prepping beforehand. What do you think of what you saw of just that little bit? I mean, it just looked just like a documentary, but it looked interesting to me. The thing is that Mister Rogers, what you see is what you got. Yeah, he was genuine, one hundred percent. That was him. He didn't play. You know, they were making a big deal about him having the African American man, the postman, in there or whatever with him, and they were playing in the pool. Which, you know, during the time, African Americans or Hispanics weren't allowed to be in the same things with uh, with with Americans, aka mm-hmm. Caucasians. So he was setting standards back in the day. But that's who he was. He wasn't like out there trying to prove a point. He was just a good man. Um, I'm upset. Number one, this movie didn't get somebody backing it big time. I would have loved to seen 
someone like Universal or Sony or WB or somebody to put the money behind it. Yeah. I only reason I say that is because Mr. Rogers, uh, an icon. Uh, for me, he was up there higher than Sesame Street to me. Yeah. I put him up there even higher than LeVar Burton. I watched Rainbow. him longer than that. I watched him longer than Sesame Street. Yeah. The la- the kingdom of make believe. The king, the meow meow kitty, the queen. I mean, come on. There there is it was the voice of all of us, all of them. I, and and he was so genuine. He'd take a sweater off and go. It's sad that some kids of these days will from this new generation won't ever have the ability to see Mr. Rogers like we did. Uh, I wonder if he's, his stuff's ever going to be released on DVDs or Blu-rays or whatnot. That'd be pretty cool to have. And then, and also when he hit subjects, mm-hmm. he hit subjects that a lot of people wouldn't talk about for kids wise. He would, he would talk about divorce because he wants kids to understand the purpose. Yeah. Again, a good guy. There was nothing wrong with him. There was, he's one of the few people in this world who was in this world who you could look up to. Yeah. I, I have nothing but good things to say about Mr. Rogers. And I really wish I mean, he made $7 million. We don't even know what the budget was, but, uh, overall so far, it might have made more than that, but it's one of those, I don't even know it came out of the theater. I yeah. wish I would have known I would have gone and seen it. And matter of fact, if I find it out of the theater still someplace right now, I'll probably go watch it. Yeah. Just see it. And, and it might overcome me emotionally because mm. Mr. Rogers was the man. Yeah. Back in the day. So. Yes, he definitely was. I was like, all right, well, that's our box office numbers. And I'm going to throw something else here real quick before we go any further. I saw another trailer for Winnie the Pooh. Oh, the, you saw the second the second yes, trailer. Yes, I saw yeah. the second trailer, and I want to see it. <laughs> I am happy. Number one, he finds Pooh because we were trying to figure out does he see him Pooh? No one else can see Pooh, or what? Is he losing his freaking mind? But no, everybody can see him. And he goes back. You know, just real quick synopsis. He goes back to help Pooh find everybody, and then Pooh and the guys come back to help him. And it's funny because there's some great Pooh lines in there. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing. And Owen McGregor just is going to steal your heart in this movie because the way he's playing it and the way Pooh and the characters and Tigger and Eeyore and Piglet, it's just, God, it's going to be a great family movie and I, I want to see it now. I really oh, yeah. do. I, at first I was, you know, I was like, dude, this is not even right. This is going to be stupid. But then after I watched the second trailer, I'm like, I'm going to see this movie. <laughs> so I just got to show you sometimes the first trailer is not the best judge of everything. It's like seeing the Predator third trailer. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still am psyched about that movie. I lost some more juice when I watched the Predator. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. It's like, all right. Uh, now we're going to kind of move on here. I know we normally have some movie news, or whatever. I mean, we just have a little bit of news. Uh, what was that one that you had, Miguel, on movie news? Oh, yeah. Well, it's actually more TV news. Uh, as you know, right now there's a hashtag save comic book men. Yeah, uh, they're about to go away, and I think they're trying to save it by all means, wanting somebody to pick it up. Yeah, friend of the show, Ming Chen's on it. Yeah, and Michael Zapsick, and it's about Kevin Smith, and you know Walt, and and, and you know uh, tell him Steve Dave, you know, uh, oh my God, <laughs> I can't think of his name right now, Brian. Right. Uh, yeah, great show. I love the guys. The guys are legit. They're honest. They're, they're you know they're really cool guys. If you ever had a chance to meet them at cons, you'd be like, wow, these guys are down to earth. And Ming is. Just Ming will pound with anybody. Yeah, Ming will pound with everybody, but Ming is genuine, and so is Mike. Yeah. Uh, I've had the pleasure to meet them both. I consider them friends, and I... They, they remember us. Yes. He, Ming and, remembers everybody. Yeah, and I just want to say, let's save the show, because it needs to be saved. It's something that's really good on TV that your kids can watch and enjoy. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's a great show. And if you get a chance, go visit The Stash in New Jersey. So that was my bit of news. Now, for the big reveal. Miguel, since he watched Jurassic World, he's going to give his review. Yes, I am. Ladies and gentlemen, the Titanic sunk. And there was (laughs) enough room on that board for Jack. Rose, you should have scoot over, you bitch. And and it might add. (laughs) It might add. You know, when we do reviews, we try to be spoiler free, but you can't. So just warning, spoilers may be coming. Yeah, they're going to be a big time spoilers. All the fucking dinosaurs die. (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, first of all, so you understand, Jurassic World uh, Fallen Kingdom was actually really good. We got there to watch the movie at exactly, see, it was supposed to start at uh, 140. It started about 150 after the trailers and everything else, and we didn't get out to 410. So that does this long movie. It was actually pretty good. Uh, I thought the plot was a little weak. 
um, the whole weapon, we're going to weaponize dinos is pretty much what it was. But they made it seem like they wanted to save the dinos, but you knew that wasn't it. You know, this chicken shit engine was behind it, or whoever the hell they are. You know, they're always behind it. So you already knew that's not the, we're not going to save the dinos. Bullshit, you're not going to save the dinos. We already know this. And, of course, Peter Quill, a.k.a. Star-Lord, <laughs> <Shut> a.k.a. <laughs> Owen. Uh, Every time he kept talking to me, because I'm Peter, I was like, he wasn't Peter. And, uh, but he uh, you know, goes to help them to get blue, because he figures they're going to save her. And they trick her, and they shoot her. They tranquilize her, and then she gets pissed and attacks one of the guys, and he shoots her, injuring Blue. Now, that's a key factor in the movie. Um, I'll give you a little quick spoiler. Blue doesn't die, so you know, so don't worry about that. It's a little sad, but don't worry. She doesn't die. Uh, so they proceed to catch the whole dino, just when you see them running around the island and everything else, and they, they pretty much betray uh, Peter and all of them. They actually shoot Peter with a dart. And it's funny because he's like temporary paralyzed and the lava's coming. Actually, he gets flipped over by an ankylosaurus, you know, the, the, the <laughs> armadillo one. He flips him over because he kicks him or he licks him, he hits him and he moves him. So Peter's lip body's like flipping over this way because the dino accident kicks him or moves him. It's kind of funny. <laughs> and it kind of helps Peter break free. So he's like throwing his arms and his legs over left, trying to get away from the lava that's flowing at him slowly. <laughs> Which if you know anything about lava, if it was that close to lava, he'd already burned. Yeah. But anyway, it was pretty funny to watch him flip himself over a log. He's moving his limp body legs and finally able to stand up and finally able to get away. Uh, and him and uh, Bryce Dallas Howard's character, I can't remember what her name was. But the IT mm. guy, they're with him. They get in the little ball. You see in the trailer, they run from the dinosaurs and whatnot. There's one dinosaur with horns, tries to eat him, and the T-Rex munches him and whatnot. <laughs> but the, the sad part was, there was a sad part. Um, when they finally get to the boat and they get on the boat and they're running. And the dinosaurs are, are uh, they got the ones they want. Basically, mostly all predators. Um, a brontosaurus, or a brachiosaurus, whatever you want to call them. One of those doesn't exist. I don't remember which one. Um, one with the tall, long necks. Yeah, the, yeah, one of them. One of those uh, is standing on the pier, crying toward the boat. And you see the lava and the smoke come out and inhales him, and you see his st- silhouette in the flame, and you see him pretty much just burn and die. That was tough. That was kind of tough. And uh, Star Lord, being, being, being <laughs> that he's a fake animal lover, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know uh, the characters were kind of teary eyed and it kind of affected a little bit. The sad music, and everything, it was kind of tough, even though you know they're not alive. But still, it was it, yeah. was, it was it was a good it was a good point. They did really good there. Uh, I left out a few things in the beginning. Uh, the big megalodon source, whatever the water fish, or whatever he gets out uh, because it's stupid idiots because they're trying to find the bones of the Indominus Rex. Uh, which the skeleton is in the water, which, like you made a point, I thought that thing ate him whole. Yeah. But apparently he must have spit the bones out. Who knows? Or uh, <laughs> shot the bones he out. Shot, I don't know. <laughs> he, he took a shit. Yeah, so, so. I can't process this. Those dumbasses get the bone, they shoot it up to the top, but the, he eats them in the sub, which is funny. <laughs> uh, so he gets out. And then you don't really see him again to the end of the movie, but no one really knows he's there until you see him about to eat the surfer, <laughs> which is really cool as shit, by the way. Uh, because this big ass fucking wave, there's people on top. This guy here and that big ass fish is like, I'm gonna give me some lunch. <laughs> but anyway, the whole premise again, they were building, they were trying to make weaponized dinos, and they cre- and another spoiler here, they created another raptor. And instead of Indominus Rex, they called this the Endo Raptor. <laughs> and the coolest thing I can say about this thing is he was bigger than Blue, maybe two three times the size of Blue. Uh, he was a killer. He was definitely a killer. Um, but he was trained and he was weaponized. Basically, they had a rifle. Whenever they put a red dot on you, he would face you and instantly knew that was you were the target. And then when they pushed the button on the side, he would attack you. <laughs> so that played a key part in his demise later in the movie. <laughs> uh, Blue's in there. Blue does, Blue does survive. Uh, but BD Wong's in it, a piece of shit guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one doing all the, you know, all the scientist crap. Yeah. And he was trying to use Blue. They were trying to use Blue to, to make the Raptor more susceptible to learning yeah. and taking orders but it, and they were going to try to use her blood but it went to shit when she had to get a transfusion from the T-Rex because she got shot and was hemorrhaging so that that, that in a nutshell there was a, the, a reason why you find out that Hammond and his partner split uh, and he plays a little bitty role and he has a granddaughter and you find out what's up with her anyway they wind up releasing the dinosaurs <laughs> and the dinos are now free in America and Jeff Goldblum was talking to the Congress people, telling them, hey, you know, we should let these things go, let them die, not rescue them because we're, we're creating things and people are going to create these things as robots and make more weapons with them or we're not going to lose control. We're going to lose control of them and, and we're going to do something else. And at the end, he goes, welcome to Jurassic World. And at that point, you see Blue, who when Peter and him were leaving, Peter tried to get her to go with him. Not Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Oh, and tried to get him to go with her. 
go with them, and she didn't want to. She looked at the cage, looked at him, and she took off. She still remembers him and still loves him very much, but she didn't want to be caged. And then you see her standing on top of the rocks looking down over some city. <laughs> some some Arizona, Las Vegas, Nevada city, whatever they are. So, but what was your overall review? Overall review, plot was plot was in you know, a blah. It was it was a reach. I know what they were trying to do. I got it. It was a real simple plot. Dinos, action, people getting eaten. Hmm. Uh Dinos, blood, eat. Got it. Yeah, pretty much. Um one out of ten. We know that tens are hard to get. Nines are for Academy for us and eight are Golden Globes. Like ten is like like National Library of Congress or some shit. Uh I have to give it a strong six. Okay. Enjoyable because it's a dino movie. Enjoyable if you shut your brain off. Uh little touchy moments with Blue and Owen, especially when they show you him the back footage of him with her as a baby. Uh and then the sentimental moments and then the issues with the grandfather. I actually thought the grandfather granddaughter thing wasn't necessary to the movie, but I understand where they're trying to go with it, trying to tie blue sins, why Hammond and then went a certain way. Yeah. Uh, but the same old, same old happens. It's, it's a repetitive thing. The bad guy gets eaten by the T-Rex. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or the Raptors, whatever you want to say, but that's how it happens. And they've set it up now to go a different route with this. I think I told you this morning, it's kind of like the fan, the, uh, Fast and the Furious series, how they went from car racing to spy movies now. Jurassic World can technically now go from that to being a dino war movie if they wanted to go that route, or a dinosaurs, dinosaurs inhabit the earth now and we're fighting against dinosaurs to survive. <laughs> so they, they've changed the whole, it's no longer a park. They're going to rewrite Godzilla 2. Godzilla takes out Jurassic World. <laughs> well, that's kind of, if you kind of look like that's kind of the route they're going with it because dinosaurs are free. As you know, Godzilla versus uh, Godzilla King, Godzilla versus Kong is coming out in 2020, but Godzilla versus Mothra, King Rodan, and King Ghidorah, which we don't know how that's going to go yet. They haven't really released. Is Godzilla going to take all three of them on or is two going to team up with him against him or what the hell's actually going to happen? So you don't know that yet, but it's Godzilla Monster Island. Or my God, what's the title called? I don't even know. But anyway. That's pretty much what Jurassic Park just did. <laughs> they saw what Godzilla did, so they decided we're going to make this a Jurassic World now. <laughs> so they can go two ways with it. Bring in Jason Statham and you got dinosaur weapons. And Jason can kung fu the, <laughs> kung fu the dinosaur in the neck or whatever. <laughs> God dang. Or the rock come in and fight a dinosaur. Who knows? Shit, he already <laughs> fought a gator and a monkey and a wolf. He didn't fight the monkey. No, yeah, the monkey was on his side. But yeah, he fought the wolf and the, and the gator. And he's like, of course the wolf can fly. But anyway, so yeah, I give it a strong six. It was enjoyable. It, it it gets you because of nostalgia. Everybody loves dinos. Yeah. And the story, even though the story was not as strong as it should have been, it's just dinos. And the new, just like they did in Jurassic World with the Andominix Rex, it's a new shiny thing like they were trying to do. That's what we bring out the new shiny dino and we bring people to the park. We bring out the new shiny dino in the dinosaur movie and people go to the theater. <laughs> there you go. So yeah. I give it a six. I wanted to give it, I was almost going to give it lower. But the fact that I smiled, I laughed, and I felt like I was going to cry once in the movie, and I did get a jump scare, which I didn't see coming, I I thought was pretty cool. All right, cool, cool. So I'm sorry if I spoiled it for you, but it's still a movie, a decent movie to go see. Yes, you can't take your kids. There were some young kids in there with them. Uh, there wasn't, there's some ports where they eat some people, but it wasn't too bad. Matter of fact, that was probably one of the funnest scenes in the movie <laughs> because the raptor tricked the one hunter guy thinking that he was knocked out, but he was playing. And the raptor was moving his tail, and the guy was looking back at it. And when he moved back, the camera panned into the raptor, and the raptor's eye opened up, and he was smiling. You can mm-hmm. see this. He actually put a stupid smile, a, a sinister smile. It was freaking hilarious, and he did it twice. So I was like, that's messed up, bro. <laughs> Damn. I was like, all right, well, let's go ahead and move on, and we're going to have our interview with... Gorgeous George and Zach the Sack Lindsay <laughs> from... League Leaders Podcast, which is basically following Clutch Gaming, which is sponsored by your Houston Rockets. All right. Well, here's that interview, guys. Check, 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 check. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, radio, radio guy and me. No problem. You're the professional here. We're just the amateurs. (laughs) <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if we'll go that far, but. <laughs> <laughs> and now our guests, <laughs> Mr. George Lindsay and son Zach Lindsay, correct? 
It's correct. That's us. Uh, you know what? I think we need cooler names. I need like a George the Gorge or something like that. If you got Rick the Dick, I mean, come on. Fine. We'll get Gorgeous George and... Uh, Man, you can't, you, I can't get nothing for Zach, Zach here. Attack. Oh, Zach, Zach Attack. Zach Attack. That's kind of... That's kind of gay. All right, George. <laughs> <laughs> we got to give him something, uh, something more tougher than that. You know, got to make Zach it, it hardcore. Something a little more manly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, something a little more manly. Yeah. Uh, come on, Rick. Come on with something. Let's, I'm put on the spot here. <laughs> say, come on, Zach. What do you? What would you like to be called? What'd Zach? you like to be called, Zach? Zach? <laughs> this is Zach. The like, Zach. Okay, on my first day. That's Jeez, right. Zach, I don't have a backup here. Hang <laughs> Hashtag on. the Zach. There you go. <laughs> no, we're calling him Zach the Sack because it's bigger than anybody else's around the world. That's right. You heard it first. <laughs> Zach the Sack. There we go. <laughs> That's going to stick with you now. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, I was oh, going to say, now Now we'll, we want to hear the last of that one. Oh, no. I'm hoping everybody hears that. <laughs> so, guys, it's it's a pleasure to have you on, number one. Uh, well, just quick quick there, George. Didn't know you were here in Houston. Didn't know you were a radio DJ here for uh, country music. Uh, nothing against country music. Uh, I hate it. Uh, and uh, No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I get it. I mean, you know, everybody has different tastes, so. Hey, I love Tay Tay as much as the next guy. I'm just saying. There you go. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And I'm glad to have both you guys on. I'm glad you were able to be in town, Zach. That's really cool. Uh, it's always cool to hang out with Dad when you get a chance to. I don't know how close you guys are. Uh, this has definitely made us closer, that's for sure. That's right. He can't stand the guy. When he gets off, he earlier was telling me, gorgeous George, he doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. <laughs> if he's anything like my dad, Zach, he's abusive. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, my dad used to joke and kid with me all the time. It was hilarious. I was just going to say, it, it It really has been uh, an interesting journey over the last uh, 18 months uh, or so that we've been uh, kind of talking about doing this uh, because uh, there was a little bit of a uh, of tension, you know, between us because of Zach playing, you know, video games and being online all the time. And I was very much a, uh, you know, I, I love to play basketball and golf and I was a football player in high school. And, you know, it's like so it was really weird for me because it's like, why, why don't you go out and do something? Why don't you go out and, and do a sport? And, you know, his thing always was I am doing a sport. You just don't understand it. Uh, so we had a little bit of that, you know, back huh. and forth. It was it was never anything real rough, but uh, but there was definitely you know some tension between us. Nah, so he, basically, he, he was always uh, he was always upset because I got the height for basketball, but uh, damned if I can't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, what I'm hearing here, Rick, if you correct me if I'm wrong, George is basically Hank Hill and Zach is Bobby. Yes, damn it, Bobby That's put down the video game. It. That's yeah, pretty much it. Yeah, bit. damn it, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> that boy ain't right. <laughs> I sell propane on the weekends too. <laughs> propane and propane accessories. <laughs> hey, that's a great that's show. Right. <laughs> Real quick, George, just so we know, George, how old are you anyway? If you don't mind me asking. I, I am fifty nine. And Zach, how old are you? I am twenty six. Wow. We're in between. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm almost as old as George. Not really. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it was definitely it was definitely a generational thing, you know, for us uh, in in being into video games and stuff like that. I just I never had the interest to do it, you know. Even when he was littler, and we got the first, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of, uh, you know, the Nintendo 64 system, you know, and stuff like that. I, I liked it, and it was fine. But it was just never something that I was into, and it was always something, you know, from the mm -hmm. first Game Boy and Pokemon and, and stuff like that. It was always something that he really, really was good at. That's cool. I know. I remember uh, you bringing up old school stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll take him further back. I remember back in the day when I had the regular Nintendo, or before, even before that, I had the Sega and the Intellivision and the ColecoVision oh, yeah. and the Atari. <laughs> My dad never played either. He didn't really care for it, didn't ever understand it. I, I did play sports, too. I did both. Uh, but, uh, it wasn't until the Sega came out and we started playing Madden on Sega that he started having an interest because he enjoyed beating me. <laughs> so, like, so, so that's where all that came. Once the competitive side came out of him, then he started playing a little bit, but he won't play any other games. Just Madden. <laughs> so, yep, yeah. Yep. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about everything that you guys are doing together. I mean, uh, obviously Clutch Gaming, uh, your fan produced podcast, uh, League Leaders and stuff. Just give us the whole spiel because quite honestly, I read a lot of stuff, read up about you guys and read all this stuff. Uh, I, I like to know more about this. I'm a big time nerd. So is Rick. I mean, we're, we're that's what we do here. Uh, we do a lot of gaming, a lot of movies, a lot of TV, whatnot, and we collect comic books and all other kinds of stuff. But 
I don't right. know much yeah. about this. This is new to me. This sounds kind of interesting to me. So I wanted to really get a good grasp with this. Well, I've been uh, I've been watching League of Legends esports for three, four years now. Yeah, something like that. Um, it started when I was in college, and I tuned on. Uh, I saw it on Twitch TV because uh, I was I should have been studying. I was procrastinating as all college students do, <laughs> and. Uh, I was like, hey, that's a that's a game that I play. And wait, wait a minute, there's a professional scene for that? Huh, I guess that's cool. And I actually ended up starting uh, to watch Europe, actually. Uh, there's a big European scene t- as well, and I started watching that. Um, and then from there, I started watching North America and everything else. And uh, as the years went by, I became a real big fan of some of these organizations. And uh, eventually, it, I had the talk with my dad of, Dad, this, this is a sport. People get paid to do this professionally, just like, you know, basketball, football, whatever. And he's like, well, I don't get why you'd watch somebody else play video games. I'm like, well, you watch other people play basketball, Dad. <laughs> like, come on now. <laughs> it's not that different. Uh and from there, he was like, well, you should you should do a podcast. You know, I'll, I'll help you do the editing and all that stuff. And I'm like, it, there's no angle. It, there's other podcasts done by the actual uh, casters, the shout casters uh, for both Europe and North America. I was like, I don't have a way in here. Uh, and this is while well, he was down here in Houston and I was back up in Louisville still. So this is an ongoing conversation for a number of months. And then uh, with the recent change, the North American uh, League of Legends Championship Series, the LCS, uh, went franchised. Uh, they actually got a lot of large investors uh, to go in with teams. And there were some of the homegrown teams that got to stay. Uh, but one of the new uh, oncoming franchising teams was Clutch Gaming, which is owned by the Houston Rockets. Well, uh, Dad knows a few people at the Houston Rockets, and I know just about everything there is to know about League of Legends, if I do say so myself. And uh, from there, he was like, well, that's our angle. That's our end. So we uh, we spent all of the spring season uh, studying, as it were, and all of that practicing our craft. And uh, we went live uh, with the playoffs for spring. And we've been covering it weekly ever since. That's pretty cool. So explain to me, it's a team of what, five members, four members, and they all yep. play they all play a game, the same games against each other. and be a, So it's like if Rick was on one team, I was on the other team. I'm playing against Rick. And the winner gets points for that team. Is that how it works? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's a very uh, straight, not straightforward game. It's super complicated. Uh, but there's five members on each side, and they each each team has a coach as well. Uh, so from that angle, it, it does look very much like basketball. Um, but basically, it's a, a siege and defense game uh, where you're trying to destroy the enemy team's base, and you do that by pushing in waves. Uh, killing a, a whole bunch of little minions that are just there to die uh, and beating up on the opposing team as well. So it's uh, it's a five on five team. And you were if you and Rick were on opposite teams, you'd each have four teammates that were fighting with you. You know what, Miguel, he, he kind of explained it to me, too, uh, because, you know, again, trying to break it down into terms that I would understand when we first started watching together. And, uh, you know, so I was like, OK, make it so I can understand it like a like a basketball team. And so you have positions on the team and you have five players. So you have a top laner, you have a mid laner, you have a jungler. You th- And so Zach did a pretty good job of explaining what each position does kind of around uh, what you would know in traditional sports in basketball. So like uh, the point guard would be one position. You know, your shooting guard is another position on the team. And and he kind of broke it down and it made it a lot more fun for me to watch because all of a sudden I started to understand what the motivation was behind each of the players. So you're on a team and maybe you're out in front. You know what I mean? Maybe you're out in front of the fight that's going on. Or maybe you're the support and you're bringing up the rear in this fight that's going on on a map and you start to understand that it's very much like a a rim protector in basketball, like Clint Capella is for the Rockets. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, he stays back. And if anybody comes in there, he swats the shot away. Well, all of a sudden you see, you know, your support or your uh, AD carry. As we call it, as, as we call it in the, in the, uh, in the league, yeah. uh, but you you know it, it, it kind of does the same thing, and so it made it a lot more enjoyable and understandable for me to watch. I was going to say, so League of Legends is the game, then. Oh, That's yeah. correct. No, League of Legends. Legends is the game, right? And it's uh, again, it's a it's a fight, uh, like Zach said, a siege and defense game. You have five players trying to take your base. 
Uh, and then they have five players trying to come over and take your base. And they have you have different things that you accomplish. You you take down towers. You take down different things along the way. And, uh, you know, again, just like a basketball game, the, the team that gets to the most wins and has the biggest advantage, gold advantage at the end, wins the game. And uh, and so, yeah, it's it's five on five and you can have a superstar player. And a lot of these League of Legends team do have that superstar out there that they kind of build their teams around. But uh, it's not unlike basketball. I mean, as a matter of fact, to me, it's very similar. Interesting. So it's kind of like basically what I'm hearing. It sounds like a big old D and D type games, like uh, with like you said, the strategies where you have to move positions, move pawns and stuff around the field, guarding this, guarding that, guarding his flank, doing this. Yep. I, it sounds very. It's interesting. very similar. That's that's yeah. Cool. No, it's it's super interesting and, and very complicated. There's uh actually over 140 characters that you can choose from now. So those would be like your different classes that you'd pick in D and D. And I, I can kind of translate it there too. You know, you have your tanks in the front line. You've got uh, your backline damage healers, you occasionally have a healer or somebody who puts up shields on the enemy team or around your team. Mm -hmm. uh, and on top of that, you're trying to get as much gold as you can in the moment so that you can build extra items that give you more damage or give you more uh, defenses, depending on what you need. It is very much a, a real-time strategy. Uh, that That's the closest thing that it's come to, but because it has evolved on its own so far from you know StarCraft and WarCraft, that it, it really is its own they they call it a MOBA, a mobile or a multiplayer online battle arena, and that just uh, that's too simple to actually make it stand out. But it, it did evolve originally from those uh, real time strategies. Yeah, I was about to say it's kind of sounds like a World of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot yeah. of pros that actually transferred from uh, uh, World of Warcraft Arena. I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, it was some of the three on three skirmishes and stuff like that. There, there was a lot of transition from there over to League. So oh, okay, cool. So the guys playing in the leagues now are, are are the top dogs. I'm assuming the guys who are on these teams. Obviously, the Rockets aren't going to sponsor a team of guys of noobs that are not that good. Yeah. At all. yeah. So they're going to get they're <laughs> going to get like top guys. So is there like a ranking system out there? Like the guys have to work on the lower leagues to try to get up to this point to to make a team like this. Uh, the ranking system they use is actually entirely separate from the for professional scene. Uh, if you get picked up for the pros, then you're in the pros. You have to meet a certain uh, requirement. Uh, in the regular game, the, the game that you and I could play, uh, and that's the ranked ladder system, much like StarCraft or WarCraft. Uh, and I believe the cutoff is somewhere in the diamond tier, uh, which is the third highest tier there is. You have to be in the top three tiers, which is like the top 5% or top 2% of all players uh, to actually qualify and be picked up by uh, a professional team. But then the professional teams themselves, uh, they have the main League of Legends Championship Series, the LCS team, uh, and then they have their LCS Academy, which is where you have sort of those minor league players. It's like the G League, again, in basketball. It's it's a developmental league mm -hmm. uh, where they kind of play, again, against each other, but they, they practice their craft craft and you get better and you you get to move up then to to the the big show as uh, as some professional athletes would say in baseball <laughs> that's kind of cool so dude like the leagues like the rockets league uh basically the rockets team uh they have their players and they have the g league like you said, the d league or developmental league like you're saying do they actually go out and scout do they watch like some of the lower levels like hey this guy's coming up oh dude yes. it's crazy no, they, they do. do yeah absolutely that, that's, yeah that's pretty they make cool a big event of that uh i think it comes in november it's either october or november this year uh right after the world championships they have uh, the north american scouting grounds actually where uh they set a bunch of requirements again for those players that are in that sort of top two percent of uh all of north america and everybody who can qualify gets to try out and then uh there's usually four different teams that are, are picked randomly from the different organizations, uh, and they get to choose uh, their new roster of five players. And then after the Scouting Grounds is over, uh, of course, there's a little mini tournament and stuff like that. Uh, but after Scouting Grounds is over, you have a chance to sign with one of these orgs. It, it's really, really cool. That's freaking amazing. And they, these guys are getting paid to do this. Oh, dude, and, and they're getting paid well. I, I mean, I think that was the thing that started really catching my attention uh, as Zach and I got into this was the amount of money that is flowing into esports in general and then into League of Legends specifically. Uh, you have teams, uh, the Golden State Warriors have a team. The Cleveland Cavaliers own a, an esports team in League of Legends. Uh, the Rockets do, of course. Uh, Rick Fox, who played with the Lakers, uh, you know, he owns a team. And he's and, been in it for years. And he's been in it for years. Yeah, he was one of the pioneer guys that really started bringing some big. And now it's like 
the games are sponsored by Jersey Mike Subs and State Farm. And, I mean, it's it's crazy how this thing has developed. Rick's Fox team, Echo Fox? Echo, Echo Fox. Fox. Yeah, very yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that because one of my – okay. I coach basketball. That's why when you start talking basketball, I coach basketball for over 20 something years. I coach my daughter and I coach in high school and I coach a private team, uh, the private high school. Okay. One of my players actually works for Rick Fox. Oh, is really? that right? Mm-hmm. Well, shoot, one of my former players, uh, is actually employed by Rick Fox. He's always with them and going to think. And that's how I know about the Echo Fox. I was like, what is yeah. Echo Fox? Yeah. I meant to, I meant to hit her up on Instagram or Twitter the other day. I was like, what is exactly is this? I'm confused. I just, you know, just shouting that say happy birthday or whatnot, but it was, just, it's, just, it's, wow, this is just crazy. I didn't even know this existed. <laughs> Yeah, it's it is it, it's a whole different world, and and I think they're doing a good job of of uh, starting to explain it to people that are again new to the game or whatever. And uh, you know, at first I was like, why would you watch somebody else play games? And Zach brought that up. You know, why would you watch somebody play video games? And he was like, you know, well, the same reason you sit on the couch and watch other people play basketball or football, which you love. And that was really, you know, that was really an eye opening moment for me and uh, a moment that, you know, kind of caused us to have that deeper discussion. And that's where we kind of found common ground on it. And then I started watching the games. He explained a little bit about what the action was going on. And I, I mean, I really enjoy watching the sport now or the e-sport. We always have to make sure we put that in there to differentiate it. I got a question for you, and I want to talk more about you guys' show and everything else. Uh, but still talking about the games and the teams and whatnot. Do they, I guess everything's electronically, so they don't really have to travel. They stay at their own location and play within their big TVs, or do they go, do like, let's say the Golden, Golden State Warriors team versus the Rockets team, do they have to meet at a certain spot in the playoffs? That yeah, is a great question. Yeah, they're actually working on that. Uh, the LCS has its own arena out in LA right now. So currently all the teams are out there. So they have, you know, live events every weekend, uh, that you can, there's, you know, two, three hundred people every single weekend out there watching all the teams play. And they, they play, you know, five games because there's 10 teams. They play five games in a day on Saturday and Sunday, every Saturday and Sunday. Um, the academy teams, because there's not as much of an audience for it, uh, they do keep those offline. So they got, the guys get to stay at their house. They get to be comfy uh, and then uh, play the games there. Uh, but they do a lot of live events. And uh, there's actually uh, the Canon that's here in Houston. Uh, and they're working on trying to get uh, an esports arena so they can get a lot more traction here and uh, have a bit of a home team advantage, if you would. Yeah, they're talking about uh, in uh, the next year or so starting to travel just like teams do. So Clutch would have, let's say, of four home games a season or, or a split, uh, they would have four home games and it would be played at the esports arena that they're building here, and then they would travel and so on like that. And I think when that happens, uh, I, you know, Rick McGill, I think that's when you're really going to start seeing people get behind it even more because they'll be able to go out and see the players in person just like you go see a game here but yeah if you guys haven't been out to the can i don't know if you know about them uh here in houston uh but they are doing some amazing stuff they also hosted an overwatch party because houston has an overwatch team too uh the game overwatch and uh they hosted a party out there and i i mean they had a few thousand people that showed up uh, for uh, for a, a championship series, and it was crazy the energy that was out there. It was so much fun. It's like wow, I've been I've been gaming for I don't know how long. I've been gaming forever. This is the first I've actually like the leagues part. I've I haven't I've seen a lot of tournaments. I've seen everything go on, and I did not know it was already in, like in leagues and stuff. So this is all new to me. So you're excited now, aren't you? Yeah. Now you want to yeah. actually try to get in the D league, don't you? No, I ain't. That's right. <laughs> He's I know try you out exactly. Well, the thing is, I'm more of a platform where you know. Uh, the platform I play on is PlayStation 4. So yeah. most of these, are what you're talking about, is probably on PC, right? Yeah, League of Legends and Overwatch are both on PC. Overwatch does have uh, versions for, I yeah. think it's PlayStation yeah, and for have. Xbox, yeah. Yeah, they have them for both. Come yeah, on, man, you're a gamer? Get serious. Throw your hat on backwards, so let's go. My PC is not that strong. <laughs> drink, drink some Monster and let's go. Come on now, or drink some more juice. <laughs> now, this what? is... It was... It's funny you talk about, you know, uh, you know, eye opening. This is really cool to hear about and stuff like that, because uh, Zach went to Boston uh, for the uh, LCS uh, championship, North American championship two years ago. No, it's just last year. It was last year. Yeah, he last went last year. year. So get this. They sold out Boston Garden 
for two nights or three nights? Two nights. Two, two nights. nights in a row. They sold out Boston Garden, where the Boston Celtics play, to hold the championship games of this uh, League of Legends thing. And it's, I mean, that's, awesome. that's when you start to go, this is real. I mean, this is a real thing. And again, it comes from guys like you and Rick and uh, people that are into video games, but have never had, quote unquote, the experience like traditional sports to go out and cheer on a team. And I think that's what these leagues that are forming uh, will offer that generation of people that grew up on gaming. And now they're going to have that traditional sports experience in esports. Now, did they do some of these at Comic Palooza over here in Houston at the Houston Comic Con? You know, I don't think the LCS was there. Um, they may have had smaller tournaments because, like I said, this is a game that as long as you have, you know, 10 computers that are hooked up, uh, to the internet, you can play a tournament. You know, you can have people swapping in and out and that sort of thing. Um, I went to uh, Gen Con last year up in Indianapolis, uh, and they had tournaments going on all weekend as well. So uh, it, it may not be sponsored by Riot Games, the, the makers of League of Legends, but there's, you know, pop up tournaments coming around at, at all kinds of different places. That's interesting. Considering Pandemic Tour comes from California, I'm wondering, since they're coming here to Houston, I wonder if that's going to have any. Huh, I'll have to check that out. That's really, I mean, it's really cool. I mean, to hear all this stuff. I mean, uh, what's great about this is that here just recently, uh, as you know, we're critical thinking. We, we do, we do reviews on movies, TV, comics, new, you know, whatever, even gaming. We play the games on the PlayStation and the Xbox. We make our quick reviews about it, try to tell our people that the game is crap or they need to work on this or this is amazing. Even games that you've never even heard of or games you never want to play. But now yeah. to have this out here is like even more like, okay, we're going to have to take this out. We may have to try this out ourselves now. Uh, but the interesting thing is that here lately, uh, over the last week or a week and a half, we started picking up a lot of people from Twitch. And I know this has a lot to do with Twitch too, doesn't it, people? Oh, it sure does. You know what? Uh, Amazon, uh, you know it's getting big when Amazon gets involved. And Amazon in 2014 bought Twitch for $970 million dollars. And Twitch is the first gaming platform to have one billion streams in a weekend a couple of weekends ago when uh, it was well, been about a month ago uh, when uh, there was a big tournament going on between the best teams from Europe and Asia and uh, North America. And they had over one billion streams in a weekend. And uh, so, yeah, Twitch is a very big part of this. See, Rick, I told you to get on Twitch more. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy because, like I said, uh, we've we've jumped, and I'm not throwing numbers out there to be like NAS or anything, but we've jumped like tremendous. I'm talking like massive numbers in Twitch followers and, and gaming people. I'm like, this is nuts. So I can only – having you guys on is going to be great for, <laughs> for great for everything. Anytime you guys tweet out or anything you have anything to say about this, please, by all means, tag us or whatever. We'll help you retweet. We'll do whatever you want us to do. This is super interesting, and we're like super excited. This is like amazing. Well, it's funny – because, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where I've I've come kind of full circle here being, I won't say a hater, but uh, somebody who didn't appreciate at all the uh, the video gaming side of things to, uh, you know, a friend of mine said the other day, you've kind of become an esports evangelist. And I was like, no, I, it's not. I, I don't feel like I'm that. But it's just like it is coming. And every time I, I tweet something out, I was, you know, I always put the hashtag pay attention. Esports is coming. And it's like I really feel like in the next couple of years, there's going to be that critical mass flip over where, like you're saying, you, you see the numbers. You see what's happening with your Twitch. Uh, I'm, I'm just telling you, in the next couple of years, there's going to be this massive flip. So you started your podcast. Now let's get into your podcast. How long has your podcast been going now? 15 episodes. We just did episode 15. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we now did. we, again, like Zach said, we were offline for a lot of, uh, a lot of the spring split or spring season because, uh, we were just trying to get down what we were doing and how to do it and being in different cities and stuff like that. And he had to teach me how to talk. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, but crap. Can it, I get some has... of those lessons? Because <laughs> 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 I can't talk where the, I mean, I'm, have you listened to me already? <laughs> no. You know, it, it, it's so funny because uh, he says that, but he, he is such a natural because he has such an instinct and an analytical mind uh, that he's really good at breaking down what he sees. And uh, and that made a real nice compliment. You know, I can I can set it up all day, but he's the guy behind it that really is the knowledge and the in the and, uh, analysis part of it. 
And uh, yeah, we've done 15 episodes. Uh, it's uh, it's been an interesting and amazing ride because immediately the Rockets, you know, kind of came on board when they heard the first couple of episodes and were like, "What is this? What are you guys doing?" Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, so we said, "Hey, here's what we're doing. We're big fans of the team." Uh, we have jerseys, we have t-shirts, we've already bought your merchandise, you know, and this is what we'd like to do. And they're like, no, 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 we love it. We're on board. And uh, they've given us great access, not only to the players, uh, but also we had a two-part uh, podcast uh, with Seb Park, who is uh, kind of the chief operations, vice president of operations uh, for Clutch Gaming and the Rockets. And uh, they've given us great access. And uh, it's been interesting to to start to get people from all over the world. I mean, Norway and Sweden and all these people that are listening to the podcast and emailing us about the podcast. And uh, it's been pretty cool. That's awesome. I was just about to ask how many big name guests that you got. On. And speaking of that, it's sponsored by the Rockets. How, ma- how many, I mean, you know, from the Rocket players, can you give us some names, some of the big Rockets players that are like super into this? I mean, it's like James Harden, oh, yeah. like Hardcore. You know <laughs> It, it's really funny because uh, Eric Gordon is a guy that uh, is very into it, and a couple of the other players. I can't think of the names right now, but there are a couple other players. And the other thing that is huge right now with uh, with sports, uh, we're great friends on the show with Lance McCullers from the Astros, and we had him on our radio show uh, not too long ago, and he was talking about all the guys playing Fortnite. I mean, that's huge right now with professional athletes in every sport. And uh, League of Legends, again, is uh, is for, how do I say this, uh, a little more of the cerebral kind of uh, athlete, you know, what that, that honestly does thinkers. love. Yeah, they're, they're thinkers. Uh, you were talking about D&D, but, I mean, there are a lot of parallels to that, and you have to have that kind of mind that wants to do that where – Fortnite is a little bit more of just escape and kind of get your brain on, you know, put it in neutral and play. Yeah, you just got to react in Fortnite, whereas you got to actually plan things in. Well, not that you don't plan things in Fortnite. I'm not going right. to no, exclude no, no, the no, audience. Well, and yeah. yeah, we're not knocking it. It's just a different kind of game. No, I yeah. see. I know what you're talking about because I watched my kid play Fortnite the other day. He's jumping around, building this, knocking down, shooting people, doing this. And then you watch people play PUBG. Mm-hmm. They're doing all that. But I can understand the strategies playing strategic games like my boss, uh, who I work with right now. He's prior military like I am. So we really get into the strategic stuff like moving your armies around and making sure you can cover this and trying Dude, to I'm flank. telling you you're going to you're going to love league yeah, as you if you'll start paying attention to it if that's your personality and a little bit of your background the military thing I'm telling you you're going to love this game once you get into it yeah, because you, you were talking about, and I thank you very much for that compliment. Uh, when you were talking about it earlier all I could think about was this game I played back in the day uh, I was on the PlayStation 2 I think it was called Kesson and it was something similar where you had uh, you had your armies and you had guys that were only able to do certain things and these guys were only able to protect your rear and, and it, you know just a fun war game so it's just strat- strategic you move you guys around and you're undermanned in this particular game you're undermanned like easily ten to one and you got to try to find a way to beat these beat the armies and so, yeah. beat the odds yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I, I love it's it even though I'm I suck tr- at it my daughter wins every time but I never won <laughs> like how's my daughter to winning. Talk to you. Because on the uh, on the podcast, one of the questions, and, and I want to get to this with you guys too, but one of the questions we always end with whenever we had Seb Park on or Apollo or Hakaho, some of the stars of, of League of Legends, we always ask, what's the game that got you started in, e- in eSports? You know, what's the game that got you hooked in gaming? And uh, what was it for you guys, Rick? Oh, man. You, you got me think back way back in the day. Like, when I first started gaming itself, uh, I was Mario Brothers. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sonic the Hedgehog was uh, was a big one that we played. I mean, back in the day before the graphics were really good. What about you, um, Miguel? I played a lot of sports game, being the athlete. But my, I really started loving Civilization. Um, you know, moving strategic type stuff like that. But I mainly played Risk. The board game Risk, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. My kids love playing Risk. I think we own like seven or ten different versions of that game. Uh, yeah, there's right, like billion. Yeah, right now I think the game that uh, I really enjoy playing the most. I mean, Baldur's Gate was another one. I don't know if you guys remember Baldur's Gate. It was a long, long time ago, but it was also a game of parties. You could play with. It's kind of like Diablo is now, where you can play with yeah. two or three people, and you have to go out there and you have to armor up, and you have to find things, you have to do quests, you have to decide if you're going to do this or do that. Uh, make different directions. So that that's the kind of stuff that was me. It was with me early on. It was just sports games. Yeah. When it came to like MMOs, like what you're talking about, like kind of like League Le- League of Legends, Command and Conquer was the one that actually got me started. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 
That's great. I love. I always love hearing how people get started in it, and you know that's something we try to cover. Like I said, every week on on the podcast, and uh, you can follow us uh, G Lindsay L I N D S E Y one zero zero three on Twitter, and Zach is Z Lindsay zero uh, one on Twitter, and uh, we post a new episode of uh, League Leaders uh, every week. Uh, as a matter of fact, there'll be a new one out next week or next week ne- tomorrow. Uh, there'll be a new uh, episode up uh, just kind of covering this past weekend. And that's what we do. We break down the past weekend's game, what went right, what went wrong, who looked good, who didn't. We hand out some MVP awards. And then uh, we talk about uh, gaming news, you know, everything from Fortnite stuff to League of Legends stuff. And then uh, uh, we talk about the the weekend's games that are coming up. And Zach gives a prediction of uh, – you know, how do you think Clutch is going to do? And uh, so far, he has been he has been dead on it this year. All right. So dead on it in that I say, yeah, they're going to go one one this weekend. And then it's the opposite game that I expected. <laughs> hey, it doesn't matter. Hey, it doesn't matter, right? You go one one. You go one one. You you take the win, right? Now here's a cra- here's a crazy question for you. Being in the sports and this is the type of different venue, has Vegas gotten involved in this? Dude, Vegas has uh, built two <laughs> esports arenas in the last two years, and one of them seats five thousand, the other seats eight thousand, and they're lobbying to have uh, some of the championships, uh, whether it's League of Legends or uh, 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 Overwatch or whatever. Uh, you're going to see those come to Vegas, and uh, esports, uh, the gambling aspect of it was- is coming into it, and that's that's also going to be a big proponent. That's what the thing well, I was talking about. Already, uh- there's already fantasy. There's already fantasy for League of Legends. Riot actually sponsors uh, their own. Your, yeah, you, you can, can pick fantasy. you just like yeah. fantasy football. You can pick your team and how they do and, and win prizes. Now that's awesome. I was just about to ask. That was the next question. But uh, yeah, the betting thing was the interesting thing. I was gonna. I was curious about. Are they gonna have hardcore rules in regards to the players that are within the professional league if they're allowed to gamble or not? Because you don't want somebody <laughs> to gamble sure something and, and throw a game because they have money on the other team, or you don't want any kind of like black socks here going back to Chicago when they do the World Series. You don't want anything like that happening. So I'm wondering they're gonna have to like govern some rules and crack down on this. Well, you don't want to have the, you don't want to have Pete Rose as a jungler. You know it's like, <laughs> <laughs> Hey yeah. hey well, with Pete the, uh, didn't better get no. coming in. With franchising coming in, it's actually uh, there's been a big crackdown, uh, also to make sure that the players are protected from the organizations. You know, there's been a lot of uh, legalese and, and contract talk in the off season, and they actually uh, created a players union too, just this past split. So uh, there's definitely going to be something in the contracts regarding uh, the Vegas betting scheme once that actually comes <laughs> comes a bit more popular in the scene. I think so. Now I'm getting a little stupid with this, but I could see this happening. You talk about we have the professional, we have the D-League, D-league and everything else, but starting to wonder, colleges. I wonder if colleges will start getting yes. into this and then offer. Oh, they already, already are. are. Full yeah, as a matter of fact, a lot of high schools, there's there's three high schools here in Texas that have started, started eSports teams, and there's high school kids here in Texas that have already gotten full ride scholarships to college. I was just about to uh, ask from that. Universities that offer eSports, uh, eSports uh, scholarships. Oh, and it, give me a minute here. I got to look this up. But they, uh, in this sort of middle of the season, uh, in between spring and summer, there's a little bit of an off season here. Uh, and they actually had the collegiate championships right at the end of uh, what would have been the spring semester. Uh, so, so give me a it's, second here. It's there here. Was... It's here. You're going to hear more about it every day. All uh, right. You know what? I need to tell my son to take the football helmet off. <laughs> Beware, forget the weightlifting and the concussion stuff. Let's go play some sports. I don't have to worry about you getting the concussions and whatever. <laughs> Exactly. Right. It might be a little weird when you tell him to go grab his joystick, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he plays he plays sports game. He plays his video games as much as I do. He loves. He also loves the strategy games too. So it's it's. He's one of those. He loves his computer. He loves his PlayStation, his Xbox, his GameCube, whatever the hell he's got now. And he also loves playing football. I mean, he lives. Breathes, eats, drinks, football, and gaming. Seriously, that's his yeah. life. <laughs> and, and, and you're finding that with a lot of athletes. Uh, again, like we talked about, you're finding that. And Miguel, it's one of those things, Rick, too. It's one of those things where it's a generational thing. You know, um, just like when we were growing up, you didn't have Netflix. You didn't have YouTube. You didn't have, you know, my boy, both of my boys, Zach and Matthew, who's a little younger, um, uh, you know, YouTube is just another channel on their web-enabled TV. I mean, uh, Netflix is just another network on their TV, just like ABC and CBS. And and esports, I think, is going to be that same kind of thing. Wait till Netflix starts carrying like 
all the old seasons on. <laughs> Go back and watch season <laughs> one, season two, watch and now the we're 2013 going 2013 championship. Yeah, yeah. Or they actually start catching up here. Season. Two. Oh, you know what? Exactly. Then, then go like the NFL. We'll start having like tough talk. You know, like they go to their <laughs> camp and they start talking trash to each other. See, that would be amazing. I could see this getting really crazy. Wow, this is just. I'm super what excited to know so much about this. Is really cool. It, it's funny that you mentioned tough talk. There's actually been some uh, behind the scenes. Uh, documentaries. So some of the teams have started just sort of uh, watching their team over the week and having kind of a, a recap video, not just of the games, but how the team has reacted to the games. There's been a lot of uh, behind the scenes stuff that's come to the forefront. Um, and, and when it comes to roster decisions and stuff like that, you get to hear from the players how they feel about it, how the coaches went to decide on this stuff. I mean, they've they've already gotten there. So much of the stuff you're talking about, like, oh, man, they should do this. They have just nobody has paid attention to it yet. Yeah, it's so new. It hasn't it really hasn't broken through yet. So, you know, what needs to happen, Rick. I'm telling you right now, they need to contact somebody and say, hey, this guy, McGill, should be your social media guy. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm not being arrogant. Or I got I got someone talk to me about that the other day. I was like, it was crazy to hear that. But no, this, this is really cool, guys. I mean, this is amazing. I'm glad that you guys have your podcast and it's fairly new. And the thing that you were already backed by the Rockets is amazing. So. I'm assuming you guys get a ton of downloads. You know what? Actually, again, it, we're just growing it, so it, we're still working on it. So anything you can do and your offer of retweeting and stuff like that is awesome. And, and we offer to do the same but because uh, we're, starting, we're starting from ground zero and building this thing. And it has grown very nicely. But uh, but again, we still, you know, Zach had to remind me of that the other day. I was like, God, I just want this thing to grow faster. And he's like, Dad, we've been live for 13 weeks. You know, it's not exactly like, you know, it's been a year yet or anything. It hadn't even been, you know, six months. So, But that's still amazing. So the Rockets are basically the sponsor for Clutch Gaming. So you guys yourself don't have a sponsor then. We do not. We have not done. We haven't gone that route yet. Again, I, I feel like we need to get to a certain level so that we can offer some return to them. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely in the plans. Is we like to uh, like to get that up there. And uh, you know, as of the start of the summer split, we were the only uh, fan produced uh, team specific podcast out there. None of the other league teams. But we've already gotten a couple of uh, you know inquiries from other teams about how did you guys go about doing this and stuff like that. So I think you're going to see that more. That's really cool. Uh, okay, so what is your Twitter for the podcast? Does the Twitter have a pod? Uh, does the podcast we, have a Twitter we account? Don't, and, and that's where I'm going to call my friend Miguel to help me with social media <laughs> from now on. And, uh, I, I got you, George. I hear you. I feel you. I work um, with that. So I'm assuming you don't have an I Instagram mean, either. Yeah, it doesn't. And and that's the thing. I mean, that's something that we've really got to get on and doing. Uh, you know, I come from the radio background of it, but uh, I know a little bit about social media from, you know, my my time with the radio station. But it is something I know we're not tapping the potential of, uh, you know, I, the thing that I've been working on, you know, from the other side is uh, I don't want to speak too too soon here. But there's uh, there's a good opportunity that we're going to get a radio show, uh, you know, out of this uh, to talk about esports here in Houston. So, you know, we're working kind of behind the scenes to try to make that happen. That's cool. nice. Here's what we're going to do for you. We will do whatever we can to help you reach out. We uh, have actually been carried up. We're being carried on a bunch of other networks right now. Uh, we get played on the Internet in California, Florida, Indiana, uh, and out in the U.K. Uh, we also have a couple of sponsors here. In Ro we have a sponsor, two in Rosemary, actually, uh, and another sponsor basically in Japan. Uh, we don't get much, but they, they really do come out and bail us and help us out whenever we need stuff. Uh, the thing I yep. want to do is I'm going to reach out to my guys in New Jersey um, and try to get you guys on their show. They do a live show. Matter of fact, they're on right now. They do a live show from New Jersey on the radio for about an hour. Uh, and then they go after that, they go live on video for about an hour and they have an extremely far reach. Uh, okay. They reach, they reach across the world and everywhere. I mean, it's, it's, Surprising they do have that big of a reach. Um, so they can do that and they can help you out a little bit that way. At the same time, I'm going to see if I can get in contact with my people over at Beyond the Dawn and see if they can carry your show on their network. Uh, That'd so, be awesome. So you can, you know, I'll, I'll reach out to the different networks we know to see if they can help you out and get you guys out there and get you some more plays. In regards to social media stuff, yes, George, by all means, or exactly to be all means, you can hit me up. Uh, I'll tweet you my number, my cell phone number, if you want it later. Uh, we'll do whatever we can to help you. I mean, we, we'll tag you in any post we have. You can tag us in any post you want. I got to tell you, we've been pretty impressed in, in following you guys since, you know, we first started talking, you know, back and forth uh, on Twitter. 
Uh, we've been following your stuff, and uh, you guys you guys are super. I mean, very impressed with what you all do and what you've built. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, we've uh, been lucky enough to have the other guys that have been with us. They're not here tonight, obviously. I mean, Sean spends hours and hours at night editing the podcast. Like, this is going to go to him as soon as we're done. And he will edit it up and make it sound real nice, play music in it, do funny things in it, put our little jabs at each other in the beginning and the end. Uh, and then release it out to the, to the people we, we need to on Thursdays. Uh, but like I said, Kyle is a really funny guy who'd bring many, many voices in here. And I, I feed off of him. And then Josh is our other IT guy that does a lot of stuff on our websites and stuff. So he's also has the ability to assist you guys, uh, if you have your own website yet or you don't. So like I said, we're always we willing, not, yeah. we're always willing to help you. We're willing to help anybody. Uh, and again, I would definitely use your contacts since you have the ability and you have the clutch gaming and you have, they have the rockets and you guys have the connections. Getting those two right there to help you tweet or help you do anything. If they tag you in anything or if any of the Rockets yep. players tag you in anything, you talk about instant numbers, quick numbers. Yeah. Um, well, so and that's been, that's been so cool because they have been, uh, they have been very good about retweeting when the podcast is up. And I mean, you can see the immediate bump in that thing, uh, when that happens. And we did a live event with, uh, clutch gaming when the guys, they had the team members here in town and, uh, they actually flew Zach down. Uh, and had him in town, and we co-hosted uh, the live event they had at the Galleria. So again, it, we're building those relationships, and you know, I have to remind myself we're 15 weeks into this, but uh, again, I want it to, I want it to grow. We know quite a few podcasts that we've had the, the pleasure of working with. We've dealt with a lot of different stars we've met at different places and whatnot. Um, there's a podcaster in New York, excuse me, New Jersey. Uh, He's a decent friend. He's a good friend. We met him at the cons. We're not super friends with him, but he's pretty cool. He has a shop here in Houston. Uh, Ming Chen, I don't know if you've heard of him. He's on no, uh, I haven't. the AMC TV show. Uh, well, it's, they're fighting to keep it on now. Uh, the Comic Book Men is produced by Kevin Smith. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he has a shop here in Houston, and he's invited us to go out there and podcast with him at his shop. So it's something I'm going to try to reach out to him and see you know, maybe you guys. I can tell him what you guys are about. He might be able to bring you on. You guys might be able to go live with him on his shows that he does. He Dude, loves I would love that. He loves oh, the podcast. Yeah, we'd love that. Yeah. And so, I mean, like I said, we can reach out to our friends. I don't know exactly when they can get you on or if they'll even try to get you on. And some of them may not even respond back to me. Cause well, like, I understand that, man. Guys? I mean, I that's the way it is, but I just, I just appreciate that you guys are putting that positivity out there of, of helping out other podcasters uh, get started because I'm a firm believer in you put good out and good will come back to you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I had something in my head just now, just talking about all this competition and everything like that. Uh, I know I've been talking to guys about this beforehand. Uh, I've been wanting to do get with our fans and everything, see who all would sign up to do a tournament with us. You know, just a group, just group people tournament, if, just see who the best is. No big prize or anything. Would y'all be willing to come out and commentate with us if we do that? Sure. Absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah, absolutely. Because we would do that for like as a, as a show at the same time, so it'd be like we'd have yep. you all as commentators. Yep, exactly right. And yep. There's a lot of trash yep, to be exactly. talked. <laughs> 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 we've kept this we've kept this podcast relatively clean, or at least I have. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You gotta try to. Yeah, you yeah. gotta try to exactly. So. Yeah, I'm not I'm not PC. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's why I'm not on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I sure appreciate everything you've done and. Uh, Again, big believers in what you all do and the Critical Thinking Podcast and and uh, how you all do it. And the chemistry is something that um, a lot of people don't talk about. But coming from the radio side of things, the chemistry that you guys have together is the thing that catches my ear every time I hear you guys. Oh, cool. I appreciate Thank you. that, George. And coming from you, I mean, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I started listening to the radio station. Uh, I love your voice. Seriously, I wish I, that, I wish I had that kind <laughs> of voice, too. Uh Zach, you'll get it. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm just mess with you guys. No, what I do want to do, and I know Rick is going to tell you this right now, we want you to give shout outs to every single thing you need to shout outs wherever you, if you have no Twitter, nothing like that or whatever, whatever you have, whatever links, whatever you have, if you want to shout it out now so our fans and our people know, and then we'll retweet it as well. That's one more thing I wanted to say. Being a family man and being as much as family means to me and Rick as well, since Rick and myself are actually blood, uh, and we were raised that family is everything. You cannot, Absolutely. you do not understand how much it means to me. And I'm trying not to tear up. Shut up, Rick. <laughs> I'm trying not to emotionally, emotionally. It's amazing to have a father and son doing something together. 
Unfortunately, my father can't do any stuff like that anymore, or he could he wouldn't do this anyway. But uh, he's ill and fighting Parkinson's and everything else. So sure. he did a lot of stuff with me as a young man growing up. As I as I got older, he continued to do. He did a lot of stuff. So I learned from him, and I do that with my kids as well. Uh, and I tried to be the same father he was with me. So you guys, are love- ins- you guys are an inspiration to me that father and son, even though it's such a big difference in age, it's a cool, it's amazing. The world needs more of it. Dads and sons, dads and daughters, moms and daughters, moms and sons. We have Absolutely. more of that. And I honestly feel and deeply in my heart that a lot of this crazy violence crap that's going out there would stop. I, I, Amen. I have, I have, Amen. I have, I have two young boys. One boy's actually fixed to go in the military. <laughs> Uh, and my young boy's still in high school, the football player, but I have a grandson now and I am terrified for the first time in my life, uh, fear for them of everything that's going on. And it's just mm-hmm. terrible. And I can it remember is, a time is. where it was never like that. And family time was so different. And I, my daughter, who's 27, <laughs> I'm only 46, is raising her son the same way I raised her. And it just makes me feel so good. And my, you gotta be proud, man. Absolutely. That, that tells you what kind of dad you were. And, and I couldn't agree more. And uh, I have become a little bit of an evangelist in that way, in that, um, you know, dads figure out what your sons do. If they don't do what you did when you were growing up, get past that. I, I had to, and I am so happy that I did. And I just, you know, I want I, I want to be that guy that dads can come to and go, well, wait a second. I don't know how to talk to my son about gaming or how did you talk to, you know, Zach about it or whatever. I want to be that conduit. I want to be that person that they can reach out to and, and ask those questions because I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, we, we've got to have more of that. It's way too important. I mean, honestly, to me, I... I, I can't tell you where I would be right now if not for it. my dad reaching out and saying, why the hell are you doing this? And then taking the time to actually listen to me and actually find common ground here, man. I, 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 I'm right there with you. If, if family time meant more to more people, then, then there really wouldn't be as much violence as we're having now. They're, they're, if people were willing to listen, honestly, just listen to each other and, and then come to a common ground, man, it so much could change. And, and that starts with the family. Beautifully said, Zach. Beautifully said. I, I don't know if you have a family yet or not, but I can tell you based on what I've heard from you and what I've heard from your father. Your father did an amazing job. You're an amazing young man. And I imagine you'll probably raise an amazing family as well. So God Thank bless you. the both of you, you guys. Thank you, so much. If you want to give a shout out to any of your stuff that you need to shout out to right now, or if you just want to give a shout out to the to the league and the Rockets or whatever, it's up to you guys. Yeah, we just want to say thanks very much uh, to the Rockets uh, and their support of uh, league leaders. Uh, we love it so much uh, being involved with them. And uh, also, I got to say thanks to Apollo and Hakaho and uh, Solo, I, everybody, Fevavend, everybody on the uh, Clutch Gaming team that's been so great to us taking time. Uh, to get to know us and let us be part of that team, and and we really appreciate it. Again, we'd love it if you follow us on Twitter. We're going to get a show Twitter because Miguel says he's going to help me do that. Uh, But right now, you can follow us, G. Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, 1003. And I'm Z. Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, 01. And you can find us on Twitter. Uh, Also, we post on uh, Facebook and stuff like that, but... uh, uh, and you Reddit can, too. You and can, Reddit, yeah, can, uh, on the Clutch Game uh, subreddit here in Houston, you can. Uh, we always post it uh, there too. And uh, Zach is one of the sub uh, sub editors or editors moderators, for yeah sir. moderators yeah. yeah for the uh, for the subreddit. So that's cool, guys. I appreciate you guys coming on. And the next time you're in town, Zach, I don't want to leave you out. But the next time you're in town, let us know. You and George will be glad to have dinner with you guys. Oh, I'd love it. That'd that would be awesome. be awesome. We'd love that. Looking forward to it. Now. Thank you, man. Y'all All right. take care. Y'all take care. All right. See you now. I want to rush like the wind, I want to run through the rain Kicking up these shoes, I want to feel it one step at a time Feel the cold on my skin, I see the sun creeping in Open eyes for the view, I want to see it one glance at a time I'm as Wow. Could you imagine ever 
ever a father son podcast that got along well no 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 shut argument. up whatever <laughs> no okay. no a father son podcast that gets along great those guys yeah. are amazing it's, it's like they were like almost brothers but they're father son yeah. which is so cool i know you missed my comment i basically said if more people were like that fathers and sons spend more time together there'd be less violence in this freaking world is yes, what i said would. and they agree with me and i'm trying i'm being very emotional right now obviously having a young son and a, and a grandson and you have nephews mm-hmm. that you worry about so, you know, it's, it's refreshing. We've had, like, this week, last week, the great Steve, the week before that, we had Yolanda. I cannot tell you how overwhelmed I am emotionally with the great people we've had on the show here recently. And my dad, Miguel, is showing emotions. No, I, I know, right? <laughs> I can't. I don't, I'm not talking anything bad about mm-hmm. anybody we've had so far on this show. I'm just saying there seems to be some kind of thing working here, some kind of mysterious thing happening here. These people we're getting on this show has been has been wild. But I can remember this gaming stuff back in the day when Fred Savage had his movie when they were doing the video games. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. And that's what that made me think of when they started talking about it. It's like, wow, these like, like the movies or the video games, even like uh, the one with Adam Sandler uh, where they're playing the Pac-Man Oh, thing. yeah, 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 uh, yeah. What's yeah. it called? Uh, oh, oh, man. It's the little bitty dots. What do you call them? Uh, oh, my God. With the Pac-Man eating pixels. Pixels. Yeah. yeah. So that's what this reminds me of now. It's like, oh, my God. So we've gone from watching it and back in the 80s to it being a real thing. And people are getting paid. Yeah. And it's a big surprise to both of us. that We both said, we're like, what? This is. I mean, I knew there was people getting paid to play video games, but not like this. I know. So as of uh, July the 2nd, 2018, here at 8 o'clock at night, I'm now turning in my resignation to Critical Thinking Podcast. <laughs> I'm, pursuing, <laughs> I'm pursuing a gaming career now. I love you. Peace out. No, I'm just kidding. Miguel will be right back next week because, you know, he realized I, I can't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't even play Mortal Kombat the way. I, <laughs> no, I have no chance. But if it's strategic games, that type of stuff, I'm not. I'm pretty good at that. Well, you you got to be a team player, man. What are you trying to say, bro? <laughs> Just because your Twitter follower is on the strongest mind? Oh, no, wait, that's, that's fucked up. That, that's exactly what you mean. Not a team <laughs> player. <laughs> hey, I am a plain team. Ah. You're a plain player, huh? I can't even say the words. <laughs> <laughs> He's a plain player, people. Look, I was a team player back in the day. I'm a team player now. I'm a team player and forever will be. Team Miguel. <laughs> 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 no, man, but it's such a great interview. I love these guys. My God, I'm going to help them with as much as I can. I know the rest of the guys here, if they were here, oh my God, could you imagine Kyle? How would Kyle would feel right about now? You think we're excited? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, what about Sean or even Josh, the big nerd? Josh probably be chum- they would They would probably fall. They'd probably be crapping themselves. They'd be like, so <laughs> this is just amazing. I, they're going to be. They're going to be like, oh, my God, Rick and Miguel got, like, the greatest interview ever. They got to talk to these guys about gaming and stuff and get paid. <laughs> They're going to be so jelly. That's awesome. Did you just say jelly? I did say. <laughs> They're going to be so great jelly. It's great. Damn. How, how's this podcast going that you've cussed more so far in this podcast than I have? What the fuck are you talking about? See, there is another one. <laughs> but anyway, I guess since we did this, we should. It uh, have been the alcohol. Yeah, you gotta stop drinking that red wine or what are you drinking over there again? It was it was Mike's hard strawberry. Mike's harder strawberry. That's right, because because sometimes you need a berry with some kick. And yeah, I had to. Sorry, at the end of the interview, I had to kind of step away for a minute. Well, you broke the seal again. <laughs> Catherine yourself like every other person in this I podcast. Tried. I tried. <laughs> it hurts too much. It yeah, hurts. It got to the point where I was like, you know, I'm, I'm I might as well just wear the pins next time I drink. Well, I understand you can't find it, so we get it. No, this That's is Rick, fucked up. It's Rick the Dick, folks. He can find everything. So, ladies and gentlemen, in case you missed it, we just had the amazing, gorgeous George Lindsay and Zach the Sack Lindsay from League Leaders Podcast, who basically cover. The League of Legends and who Clutch Gaming, which is sponsored by the Houston Rockets. So League Leaders Podcast. You guys got to start following them. I am going to help them with their Twitter and stuff, but these guys are amazing. And I can't wait till Zach comes back in town so we can have dinner with him. Yeah. And then also, like, well, let's go ahead and give a shout out to all of our sponsors. And again, shout outs go out to our main people today. Of course, this podcast is brought to you by Uncanny Comics. Uncanny Comics located in Rosenberg, Texas, right there on Avenue I. Go see Joseph Cano and his two dogs and pick up some comics. Hey, and guess what? He recently bought a whole collection. So he has a lot of uh, new pop figures in there and a lot of uh, X-Men and uh, Marvel action figures and they're really cool looking too after he sold all of the pops that he did he sold everything yeah he restocked restocked. and it's really cool he got a got a shrewd business deal on that one he did a good deal uh so he's got some cool stuff in there and the new comics are out and 
it's a great place to go and a great place to hang. And he's also got a new board out there basically listing the days and nights of the games he's playing. So you can kind of see when the game tournaments are going to go so you can come in at 7 o'clock and play the games, which nice. I thought was pretty cool. And it's also on their Facebook and Twitter, and you'll see it out there. So Uncanny Comics on Avenue Line, Rosemary, Texas, Joseph Cano. Also, our podcast is mainly, superly, hardcore, brought to you by Tanks Paintball. Tanks Paintball located on Southwest Freeway outside of Richmond, Texas. Also not too far away from Uncanny Comics. Richmond is. Is it Richmond? It okay, whatever. Richmond. But that's cool. But we want to send out a quick shout out to Tank. My man Tank was ill, was in the hospital, had a little scare. He's doing okay. I sent him well wishes from us. He's all right. So that's good to know. Zoe, we also wanted to wish her some, you know, health wishes because she was a little sick too. Um, she's doing well too. So Tank's Paintball. And the reason why we do that, not because we're sucking up, because they're good people. Uh, Tank's Paintball. I make jokes about going in there and shoot people in the butt, but it's a great place to go. It's a lot of fun. Rudy's there. You see Rudy do his little periscope thing, being all kinds of goofy. My son works there, but it is a great place to go play and have fun with your family and friends and just shooting each other. Granny should be with paintball or, or a little softball, but it's so much fun. And Rudy, uh, Rudy, best friend of mine, you know, good friend, of, good friend of me and Kyle's before, you know, before the podcast. But I'm going to come help him out now. I mean, through the month of July, through the month of July, he announced this on his, on his Facebook Live. So it just started? Yeah, it just started. So through the month of July, he was this whole weekend, and then I guess uh, it might be uh, I forget when, but I know it's every Friday. He said you can play for only seventeen seventy six. Really, very nice. So that's freaking cool. Again, thanks paintball is a place to go. It's all about family there, and I think he's going to do something zombieish toward Halloween. I think. I yeah, can't he, has, what it is. he has the uh, the zombie hunt. Yeah, that's they do the zombie hunt. Uh, Oh, they do it every year. And also, we here at Critical Thinking have passes and have gift cards and stuff to you could actually win or actually probably get some stuff to go to tanks and actually play for free uh, where you only have to pay for your paintballs. So if you want to try to win some of that stuff, hit us up on social media. Hit us up with some stuff, and I'll ask you some stupid questions, and we'll see what you got. If you get it right, we'll be glad to give you something. But, you know, go visit Tanks Paintball. Also... Another sponsor who we dearly love, even though he likes to make all kinds of cracky jokes, talking about big rig mix butt paste or whatever the hell it's called. I don't know. It helps keep your tank clean. Like, what the hell is going on here? Tokyo Munchies and Kyle out there in Japan. You got to forgive him. He's a little disturbed. He's a little short and he's bald. He can't help it. And he's from Australia. He likes to get his kanga on from down under, if you know what I mean. So <laughs> what I'm saying. So he uses the big mig rig apple juice sauce, whatever it's called, <laughs> to rub on his taint to keep it clean. He also likes to use the vacuum cleaner to blow it out. But anyway... <laughs> So if you just sucker blow, suck it out. Don't blow suck, it out. Sucker blow. He is your man. Tokyo Munchies. He'll give you the stick. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so go to Tokyo Munchies. dot com, and he also catch his podcast on Anchor, and where he clearly mentions uh, critical thinking as his favorite people in the world. So those are our sponsors. Now, quick shout outs to the radios who we love. Let's give a shout out to the Eight Bit Bros, our new guys in the house who carry us out in Jersey, who have an em- a- enormous reach. Sadly, not their penises, but their reach is long. It's a good reach around. <laughs> yeah, they do. Especially the skinny old guy. <laughs> <laughs> they got the Spunk Lube. They're sponsored by Spunk Lube, but they carry us live, and we appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. Also, don't forget we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the lovely, amazing T Dawn over at Beyond the Dawn Radio. Beyond the Dawn Radio has been with us from day one. Beyond the Dawn Radio has had our back, and Beyond the Dawn Radio plays us twice without any problems, no no qualms, no nothing. I can't say thank you enough to be on the Dawn Radio. Oh, definitely, definitely. We we love them. Also, big shout out to NFG Radio. No fucks given. These guys don't give two rat's asses about what we say. <laughs> love those guys from the Unknown Factor, which is part of the No Fucks Given Radio. And guys, we're going to get you back on. I'm working on it. We'll probably get you on maybe the second week of July or maybe closer to August. But I'm going to get you back on because we need you on here because you guys are going to need to play the blue waffles in front of us. Because <laughs> <laughs> we know you love it with this extra syrup. Ugh. That's called the leakage. <laughs> <laughs> so those are our radio people. So we're glad to have them here. So again, for Rick the Dick, I'm Miguel Garza, the the man, the legend, the myth. We out. Hey guys, you can connect with us on iTunes at Critical Thinking Podcast and Twitter at Critic underscore Thinking. And also on Facebook and Instagram at Critical Thinking Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Critical Thinking is on Beyond the Dawn Radio, which is known for playing the best indie radio music around the world. On Thursdays at 7 p.m. Pacific and 9 p.m. Central Time. And if you like the show, please five-star the episode and tell your friends. So thank you for joining us, thinking shit through one podcast at a time. (laughs) 